So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I, rather than working on the whole painting <laughs> right in front of you right now, I'm going to start on one small area, like maybe here, or maybe actually here, because I know somebody was talking about this area being kind of, kind the of balcony. I'll do the balcony. The color looks really green when I look at it, just looking at the photo of that door. It looks green to me. But when I compare it, it's very gray with just a hint of green in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, my gray color. And my gray is brown and blue mixed together with white. Now blue already is leaning towards, you know, green. green blue is present in green. So then I'm going to add some yellow to that color to help make that color look a little greenish. Even though it's a grayish tone, a grayish color, pardon me, mm -hmm. I'm going to use um, a little bit of yellow in there. And then the best thing I can do is put put it on and see. Does it feel right? Yeah, it feels right to me. So I'm just going to go in there and start sketching in. So I'd start by just painting the big mass of the door in. Okay, now, oh, let's make sure I get that angle right. Now inside the door, there are those louvered areas that are dar slightly darker. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding more brown and a little bit of blue to that mixture because I see those levered, louvered door things as being um, kind of grayish brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to take my brush and here's where you can choose your brush. I've got a filbert brush that has a wide edge and a thin edge. I'm going to use the wide edge of the brush and I'm going to angle it to the same angle as the roof line. So I wouldn't use it like this where the angle of the head of the brush is like that. I want the brush to be angled on the same kind of angle as that roof line so that if I go in and draw a line, and every brush stroke or two I have to go in and reload my brush because with oil, since everything is wet, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up the color underneath. And then I can go and I can go along the top edge and I can square it off a little bit if I want to. But it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, if I want it more perfect, rather than worrying about all that other stuff, I can just go back to that greenish gray and I can just straighten out the areas in between. But for me, I'd rather not have to do a ton of measuring or making. I just want it to be the impression just to give the idea of what's happening there. Now, maybe it gets a little lighter at the bottom. You know, there's a little bit more reflected light off the, off the base of the balcony, so I might lighten up that grayish green and now layer over top of it, starting at the bottom, and just brighten up the bottom half of that greenish area. Around the door frame, especially at the top, it's a little bit darker. I might just exaggerate that a smidge. I'll go back in and just darken up that bottom, that top edge. And now I'm going to look at some of the other details in there. Okay, so like there's this rim around the door. It's like almost like a door jam. So it's kind of like these same colors in here, but darks and lights. Okay, and hold my hand steady. This filbert brush is great for making lines, I think. I just use my brush, and what I'll do is, is I'll mix the color, and I'll push and wiggle it into my brush, but then I smooth out that brush by turning it upside down and, and drawing a line, then turn it around again and draw a line. So I get this fine um, point edge with which I can make a line when I hold it sideways. So I'm gonna put this um, here for my hand. And I'm going to use the brush again. It's in the direction, the brush angle is in the direction of the line I'm drawing. So I get the thinnest edge. Because if I was to draw a line, let's, let me show you what I'm talking about. If I took the wide edge, I'd make a wide line. If I took the thin edge and I want to draw it on an angle, I'd have to use it and turn that brush angled towards the angle of the line. Because if I angle it another way, the brush gets wider.
All right, how would I tackle the balcony? There's so much um, detail in that balcony. I, I, I just, even looking at it would overwhelm me if I had to go in and do all the detail. So rather than doing the detail, what I tend to do is I'll give the impression of the detail. Now there's a couple ways that you can do it. Um, one of the ways is you could use the same brush you just used, for example, that, that filbert brush. You could make it as thin as possible and just go in and make a line here and there and, and create lines that way. There is a brush that's great for making lines. It's not on your supply list. But if you want to um, invest in another brush, um, this one here is not a great example. It's an old version of, of the same thing that I'm talking about. But this is a script liner brush. It also could be called a rigger, where the bristles are really long and it's round, okay? And it's kind of thin. But the minute I get some oil or water on it, it goes to a nice fine point. And this one's kind of bent over years of, of neglect. Um, but that's a great brush for making some line work because what it will do is it'll allow me to go in and I'll do the dark half of this um, railing with this br long brush. Okay, so when you look at the railing, look at the photograph of our railing there. In shadow on the right hand side, that, that um, railing is in shadow so it's darker than on the left side which is all in white. Which looks white but is not pure white. It's a light value but no I, I tend to avoid pure whites just in the very very um, unlikely event that there's a real shadow so I'm going to take a color and I'm going to try this out I just mix some brown with a little bit of blue and some white and I'm going to use this and I think it's going to be too light but let me see it's a little bit too light so I'm going to darken it up just a smidge more brown all right you guys here we go. So what I'm going to do is take this brush and because it's got that long bristle, it's not as susceptible to the wiggle of my hand. I'm able to make a better line. So I can use the brush and just go in and create some verticals and horizontals. And then if I want to, I can have a couple little impressions of some detail here and there. And you're doing that um, while it, the other um, is still wet. Yeah, everything is still wet. So I've got to make sure that I'm, I'm getting more paint every now and then. So there are some highlighted areas in there. So I'll create a little bit of a highlight color now. Again, I'm not using any whites. I'm going to mix the white with other colors to make a light value. But I don't want any whites because really there isn't a lot of pure white in your photo. Most of the time there's no pure white. Rarely is there pure white. So I'm mixing a very light brownish gray for my highlight. I've added a touch of yellow to it too. That's going to be my white there. So I'm going to just get my brush. And now if I have wet paint, I've got two layers of wet paint now. I have the wet oil paint from the door and I have the grayish tones from the first part of the railing. Now I want to put a highlight on it. The only way to build color and layers in oil is to get thicker with the paint. So, meaning, um, you know, actual thicker, goopier paint. So I'm gonna go to that corner first. Draw a line down. I can only get one line in, and then I gotta clean that brush off. And then I'm just gonna go here and there and just create the impression of highlights hitting parts of that railing. without worrying about doing every little nook and cranny of that railing. Even just that alone gives me the impression of some scrolly work, but it's just a few dots and dabs in there. But from a distance, it's good enough. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it in the highlighted section where I'm gonna use the, a palette knife instead. Because if you've got a palette knife with, a, with a, a straight edge, you can use the palette knife to create that instead. And there's still some shadow in there, so I'm gonna start with the shadow. Um, it's really just along the bottom edge of that top part of the railing and then on the side of this one. So I'm just going to go in and what I do is I'll create a thin layer of, of the color that I've mixed and I've kind of spread it out a little bit. And then I go in and scrape. So I just get a little bead that's fairly consistent in its width. I don't want to have a bead that's really thick and goopy down here with just a little bit down at the end. I want the, the bead to be about the same width. And then i got to get the angle roughly right.
and then boom, look at that. So much better of a line than I could ever paint. Mm -hmm. And because it's thicker, it sits on there better. Now, if I have a shorter line to do, like the line here, I've got to get a, 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 a thinner bead. I don't want the bead to go all the way up the brush. I want the bead to be that long, so I wipe off the rest. <clears throat> Get my angle right-ish. Dupe. Done. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the lighter value again. Just mix a thin, sp evenly spread area of that color. Oh, I'm going to wipe off that pal knife. Go in on one edge and get a bead. That's got to be about the same. See, that's not right. So I'm just going to keep doing it. If it means I have to do it a few times, I'll do it till it's right. There we go. To get my highlight in. And same thing, you know, here on the side, I've got to make sure it's the right height. So I wipe part of it off. So I could do the whole thing that way instead and I could just have a bunch of little lines going straight up and down or I can take this little teeny tiny brush and do it mm -hmm. either way this is an easier way to do it on top of wet paint mm -hmm. so like if you want to do it while the whole thing is still really really wet mm -hmm. pellet knife So I just do the idea of it. If this is my focal point, I'll spend more time on it and make it, you know, much more realistic. But I don't have to do every little, I don't have to make it exactly like this. I'm just going to give a few lines up and down, a few dots here and there to kind of show that there's something going on. But I'm not going to worry about it being hyper-realistic. <laughs> 